I took this problem directly out of my my calculus textbook and it's so so I just gave you the information down here it's calculus of a single variable special fourth edition by Larson, Hostetler, and Edwards, page 113, number 6. So if you happen to have that book, you can, you can look at it. Uh, and, and if you don't, uh, I actually recommend it. I like I liked the book. I used it for both Calc 1 and Calc 2 when I took it. And in fact, the, the Calc 3 is, is written by this, the Calc, my Calc 3 book is written by the same people. Anyways, okay. So we have find the values of the constants A and B such that this limit equals radical 3. And how are we going to do this? I recommend that if you're if you are are comfortable with limits, uh, you like problem solving, and you're good at algebra, that you stop and and try this on your own. In fact, it, even if none of those things are true, I think that you should stop and try this on your own because it will only help you get better. Just think about it, even just for 30 seconds or a minute. So pause the video and do that. Okay, hopefully you're back from pausing the video and let's let's begin so when I see a radical and a limit I immediately think let's rationalize so this let let's rationalize so I'm gonna forget about the fact that this needs to equal radical 3 for now I'm just gonna try and simplify this limit so we'll have a the radical a plus bx minus radical 3 all over x and now we have to multiply by the conjugate so let's do that so this will be radical a plus bx minus, or sorry, plus radical 3, all over that same exact thing there. So radical a plus bx plus radical 3. Okay. And and we know what, what's going to come out. This will, will be the limit as x approaches 0 and both these terms will will be squared so they'll be rationalized so this will be a plus bx minus 3 all over x times uh, radical a plus bx plus radical 3 okay now what do we do this is where we we kinda run into a problem and we gotta figure out what to do so here's one, two, three, let me put four up here. Well, to me, what I see is I see a B multiplying an X up here and an X down here. And I know that the limit as X approaches zero means I have to get rid of this X in the denominator. It's multiplying everything and, and as long as that's there, this limit, we won't be able to find it because that X will make the denominator zero. So what I want to do is I want to kind of isolate this bx. I want to get this to be bx over just this x so that those x's cancel. Right now the x's don't cancel because we have an a being added and a 3 being subtracted. So this numerator needs to be needs to be different. And the way that I can I can get those terms to go away is I can say, "Hey, you know, we're trying to find what a is. Why don't we just say let a equal 3?" That will make our lives easier. Cuz this a will add to zero with this negative three or this if we let a be positive three it'll be positive three minus three and that will be zero so so if we do that let's see what we get we're gonna end up with the limit as x approaches zero of three oh, I already told you those those will add out so this will be bx divided by x times the square root of three plus bx plus radical three Okay, so that's a little bit messy. I'm going to try and try and clean that up in the next next time I write it. So these x's though they cancel. You have an x in the numerator and an x in the denominator. They're both multiplying, so those can divide to one. Okay, so let's continue. So this will end up being the limit as x approaches zero of b over the square root of three plus bx plus radical 3 and now we know two things we know that this has to equal radical 3 and we also we, we can at this point take this 0 and plug it in for for x so what we're left with is we're left with b 
Once we plug that limit in, we've, we've evaluated the limit, so we're left with b over radical 3 plus 0, so just radical 3 plus radical 3, is equal to radical 3. And, and this is just, let me, let me erase this to give myself more room. So this is just going to be b, oops, b over 2 radical 3 is equal to radical 3. And now that's easy enough to solve. Just multiply by 2 radical 3 on both sides, and, you, and you're going to end up with b is equal to 6. The radical 3 times radical 3 will become just 3, and then you have that multiplying 2, so that's 6. And if we let a equal 3 and b equal 6, then, then that limit will turn out to be radical 3. So this wasn't actually too hard, although maybe looking at it, it seemed a little bit difficult. But we found a and b. a equals 3, b equals 6. And they're nice whole numbers. Okay, great. And if you got that on your own, then, then you're probably pretty comfortable with solving limits, and you should be fine with that. If you, if you didn't get that on your own, then don't worry about it. This was a difficult problem, and as long as you understood it once it was explained, then that's what's important. Okay, see you in the next video.